Today we're going to start looking at JavaScript. Now, JavaScript is something that I'm not very, uh, very thoroughly versed in. I've played with it before. I think it's uh, been a great thing, but I'm also hoping that HTML5 uh, picks up uh, in popularity uh, soon once it is all finalized, and we can replace most JavaScript and Flash with just HTML5, which is a more efficient way of doing it as far as system resources and just um, uh, maybe a little bit of compatibility. Um, uh, so we're going to go over JavaScript. Uh, like, like I just said, I'm not that great with JavaScript. Also, you notice in the title of this video, it says JavaScript tutorial for Linux users. Uh, JavaScript is not just for Linux users. If you write a JavaScript, it should run on, on any JavaScript enabled uh, browser. Um, so, you know, if you're a Windows user or a Mac user, you know, that's fine. These tutorials will work for you. Uh, I just put that because a majority of, well, all my viewers hopefully are open source users and Linux users. That's what my videos are geared towards. And um, so if you want to follow along, if you're a Windows user or Mac user, just don't ask me any Windows or Mac questions because I really don't care. Uh, that's pretty much straightforward. That's not what I'm here for. Um, and also I haven't tested uh, these JavaScripts in Internet Explorer or Safari. Um, they should work, but at the same time, different browsers may handle things a little bit different. So if I forget a tag somewhere or put something a little bit different, uh, it may or may not work the same. It may vary differently in different browsers. That's why if you're designing a web page, a good web page designer, just as a good programmer goes around and tests his software or her software on multiple platforms and systems, a good web designer should test their web page in all major browsers, which I would say, um, you know, uh, Safari, Internet Explorer, my favorite Firefox or Google, uh, Google Chrome, that is. Um, so, you know, but not everyone has accessibility to Internet Explorer and Safari. So at least, at least make sure that your code is compatible with Firefox and Google Chrome if you're just doing a personal website. But if you're doing something professional, you really should test on all browsers. Um, anyway, uh, moving on a little bit, uh, I also want to mention here I am using a browser in this tutorial called Epiphany, Epiphany Browser. Uh, like I said, I'm a Firefox guy, but Epiphany Browser, the reason I'm using that is because it auto refreshes when you're pointing to a page, an HTML file on your system, and I've mentioned this before in tutorials, once you save that, it will automatically refresh, so it gives you a nice little preview, and that's why I'm using Epiphany Browser to preview stuff. Also, I'm using Vim as uh, my text editor. Use whatever text editor you like, just make sure it's an actual text editor and not like a word editor, you know, word document editor. So uh, Vim, Nano, Vi, uh, Gedit, um, or Kate, or Kedit, whatever you use, that's fine, uh, but I'm gonna be using Vim. Now that I've got I think all of my disclaimers out of the way, let's dive into the tutorial. I'm going to try to keep most tutorials short, and I'm sorry for talking so long at the beginning of this one, but it's the first one, so I had to get a little intro there. So let's get going. So we have our HTML code here. We have our HTML tags, our body tags, and our HTML header one files. Okay, one more disclaimer. I also assume that you already know HTML and that you've probably done some sort of uh, programming before. I'm gonna go through the basics on these tutorials. I may not go into great detail, although I'll try to explain everything out. Now, uh, let's go ahead and create uh, some JavaScript. In this case, we'll put it right in our body here. We want to print something out on the screen right below our hello world header there. So what we'll do is we're going to say that it is a script. So we're going to start a tag that is a script tag. And we're going to tell it what type of script is it. Well, it's a plain text script. And what type of plain text script is it? It's a JavaScript. Don't forget to close your quotations there and close that tag. Now put a closing tag here for script. Now you notice uh, I'm using Vim, which is uh, color coded. A lot of text editors are nowadays. And it's very good that it will allow you to see if you're messing anything up. As of right now, everything's purple down here. It's because I haven't closed that tag yet. So if you can use a color coding editor, that's great. So we've got our two tags. Anything inside here will be recognized as JavaScript. So what we're going to do is we're going to say document which is our web page. It is the, the web page we're working on, the entire HTML thing. And we're going to say write, 
So we're going to write something to it, and then we're going to give parentheses and a semicolon uh, to end the line. And then anything we put inside these parentheses will be printed to the page. So we'll put some quotations because we're just going to write a string out. And we'll say this is my JavaScript. Great. So now if I save this, Epiphany should auto refresh. There we go. And we got this is my JavaScript. And you're going, if you know, whoop de doo, I could have done that easier with HTML code. Well, the great thing about JavaScript is that it allows you to HTML, which is static, once the page is loaded, it's loaded. JavaScript allows you to manipulate content on the page without having to refresh the page, which is what we're going to get to more in the future. Um, but right now I'm just showing you the basic write function. Let's add another document write line here. Let's make sure we spell stuff properly. And we'll say write, and then once again our parentheses and semicolon. I'll put a string here for uh, a line break, which is just an HTML tag. But then outside those uh, quotations I'm going to say plus, so we're going to add something to that, and we'll just say date and then uh, the little parentheses there and that's calling the date function which is a built-in function in a JavaScript and uh, you can manipulate it different ways we're just going to throw out the basic one here we're going to say write that and but ah when the page refreshes you see that hello world this is my JavaScript uh, and then it has the date and time that is currently happening uh, one more thing I'll mention in this first tutorial is that not every web browser is JavaScript enabled. Uh, and, you know, all major, major uh, commonly used browsers are, as the, all the ones I named earlier, but if you're using a lower uh, a, a browser that's made for low resources, it may not uh, allow JavaScript, whether it be a GUI interface or even a lot of text. Uh, most text uh, web browsers don't uh, use JavaScript. So what happens to those browsers when you're calling JavaScript? Well, some will just ignore the JavaScript, but some will also actually print out the JavaScript on the page. So the page will actually display this code instead of the output that it's supposed to output, uh, or information it's supposed to output. So how can we prevent that? If we wanted, we can do uh, use HTML commenting. So we can say, uh, less than exclamation point dash dash and then we will say um, forward slash forward slash dash dash and then greater than symbol and what this is telling is if the browser is just using HTML it will completely ignore that if it's JavaScript enabled it will still use the JavaScript so if we save this you'll see in epiphany up here it refreshes the only thing it changed is the time because time does continue to move forward um, but the output is all pretty much the same, so it, 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 the, these uh, commenting tags don't affect it. But once again, if it's a plain text browser that doesn't have JavaScript, uh, this is something that you don't have to do, but you may want to, and all depends on your target audience. It's something, you know, if you know your target audience they are hardcore geeks who use text browsers all the time that aren't going to be have JavaScript enabled, well, right here, this is something you may want to do. Majority of people are going to be using browsers that have JavaScript or a browser that will just ignore the JavaScript if it's disabled. So it's not a big deal, but I wanted to bring that up just for your information. So anyway, we'll continue uh, in our next tutorial. We're going to go over functions, creating our own functions. So I thank you for watching. Please visit the links in the description. I'll have this code there. I also hope that you uh, just browse my site. I have lots of tutorials, and I hope that you have a great day. Thank you for watching.